Hello there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, well, listen, look, I'm in my T-shirt. I've got shorts on. We're getting well into May now, and it's time to have a look at some of the projects that we've been looking at in the past. So let's get going. Well, hello there, it's great to see you again. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, for my visit to Fibrex, which I went to just last Saturday, actually. I'm filming this on Tuesday, the 7th of May. I'm sort of trying to catch up a bit with things that I've been uh, doing in the glass house, and I thought today would be a great time uh, to update you on some of the things that we've been doing together uh, throughout our time here over the last few months. Uh, we'll have a look at our test plant, which is this one, and I'll also give one or two tips on some of the uh, things that we can do. We've got the national show coming up. I think it's around six weeks time. So now is the time to think about what we're going to do with blooms that are currently open. Um, and I know that one or two of my plants need stripping down, to be quite honest. Uh, because we've got what we call the deformed early blooms, which I have spoken about in the past. So we'll we'll have a little bit of a review of those uh, and why I do it and what you can do uh, if you want to. Now we've had just about a week of May. Uh, it has started at long last to warm up a little bit. There's no doubt that the very cool, dull spring that we've had this year uh, has really had an effect on the plants they are really quite slow particularly the plants that we are looking at uh, for using for show this year which thankfully is almost a week later than it would normally be because of the fact that there are five Saturdays in June this year we always have our national show uh, the Pelagonium Geranium Society national show on the third Saturday of the month uh, but we're actually having it on the fourth Saturday this year because uh, of the fact that the first falls on a Saturday. So we've sort of spanned it out to as far as we can. But in a way, that's good this year because the spring has been awful. Now, we've got one or two blooms now beginning to break through from the plants that we have stopped. And perhaps a, a good example of having a look at blooms that are slightly deformed uh, is my big standard plant here, my big standard, uh, a Rushmore spotted shrimp. It's a giant thing, uh, easily sort of two foot or 60 centimetres across at the base. Very big trunk, uh, two, two and a half centimetre trunk. Uh, really, really good plant. Uh, but it started throwing deformed blooms and this is what happens uh, when you get a, a, an early season burst, the plant is really wanting to get growing uh, and it, it sort of almost falls over itself to, to want to grow on quickly and you get all these slightly deformed blooms. Uh, and all of these need stripping off. Right, so you can see here, um, these are, if you look, this is a double. It only generally affects double. Well, it does only affect the doubles, really. Uh, and each of these little individual florets, they're just beginning to spill out. But these blooms should be nice and sort of rounded and open. And these are all little petals that are just sort of breaking through. They're slightly deformed. And what I need to do with all of these is get these taken off. Now, we've got six weeks to the show. And I can see if I go down on this particular one, I'll break that off because that's got to come off. We've got some other batches of blooms coming through on the t above these ones that I'm breaking off. Uh, you will always find that they follow through quite quickly. There, so there's another one, and maybe that one's a bit open a bit more, that particular floret. And you can see these are completely deformed. Uh, they're useless. We need to get rid of them. So just snap them off and already above that, we can already see another bloom forming. So that is exactly what we want. We're not going to lose anything now by taking that off. And in six weeks, that will develop and turn into a perfectly good 
uh, head, which will hopefully be nice and normal. So I'm just going to break all of these off. Anything that's open now will be well, even if it's fine, anything that's open now with six weeks will be well over by the time um, the show comes around in six weeks time. Uh, so you should have no open blooms at all. Here's another one, the good classic example. We'll take you that one there and there's already a bloom above it forming. And these are all deformed anyway, so they'd be useless for a show plant. This is perhaps a, an even better example because it's a bit more open. It's, they're all completely deformed. Right now, plants that really do suffer bad from this early season bloom carnage, if you like, are stellars. Double stellars are terrible. And we've got, um, this is prim, uh, which has just started to bloom, but these are all really, really bad. Uh, perhaps a good idea, but I think I've got those in focus there. Uh, you can see they're all little spiky blooms. They're all completely deformed. These should have a nice, relatively plump double bloom, but they're all completely deformed. So I'm just going to break those off. I mean, it's up to you whether you want to. I mean, I'm this plant will probably not go to show. This is not going to go to show this plant. Uh, but I'm not interested in having blooms that are completely deformed really on any of my plants. So whether they're going to show or not. So these can just be broken off. There we are. There's a good example of one there. Um, really sort of, I mean, some of the stellar blooms are relatively spiky like that. But this is just early sort of deformed blooms. It's quite common. It happens it can happen every spring. Uh, it's just where the plant has just gone mad to really suddenly push blooms out because about a couple of two or three weeks ago, there was no sign of any bloom on these plants. And normally blooms take a little bit of time to form over, over a period. So these have bolted almost and just gone completely and utterly mad. There's also a bit of hen and chicken. So this is where we get the uh, a stem as well growing through on a, uh, a flowering umbel. Um, and you don't want those. They just take a lot of energy from the plant. So you can break those off. There's another one. You can see the little leaves just beginning to form on there. Uh, this is all completely deformed. So we can get rid of all of those. I mean, it does settle down once we start getting the sort of solidly warmer days. And, um, you know, things all begin to steady down for the summer. Well, another one of mine. This is the top of um, my butterfly, Brian Westand. And this has gone mental. And I have actually already stripped this one. Um, there's a, a couple more on here that are just growing through deformed. Um, Stellars are one of the worst types actually for doing the, uh, the deformed. They're doubles. Double Stellars uh, are the real culprits. But I have stripped a lot of this over the, uh, the last couple of days. I don't think there are too many more now. I want to wait uh, and just see how the remaining blooms, because there are so many of them, uh, begin to form. So any that are just opening, I will take off. And hopefully we'll get to a stage relatively soon where they begin to come through normally. Uh, but that's the top of uh, my butterfly, Brian West. Right, and so to our test plant. So I'll close in on this and we'll have a look at this together. Right, now, I mean, like all plants, it's suffered a little bit from this awful uh, spring that we've had. Got a reddening leaf there. That's sort of fairly common from the, 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 the cold period that we've had. So that needs to come off. All reddening leaves, reddened leaves need to come off. We've got a bloom there, which is coming through now, which again, with six, a good six weeks to go, that needs to be just nicked off. I'm gonna to have to get a, a knife on that because I don't want to pull down against a small stem that that's coming from. So I'm just taking that one off. Uh, we've got a few beginning to come through there. Um, 
We've got a reddened leaf there. That needs to come out. Now this, like a lot of the, my zonals this year, it's nowhere near dense enough yet. So I'm hopeful that in the next six weeks or so, that this will begin to sort of really grow out a bit. There's a few slightly pale leaves as well. Again, this purely comes down to this shockingly bad spring that we've had. But other than that, I mean, it's fairly well balanced, which we've already sort of known about. It, it's, it's grown, it's nice and round from the top. It's looking very neat. There's a, just a hint of a hole there, which is minorly disappointing. Uh, but I've not got many um, dwarfs to take to the show realistically anyway. Uh, I will get rid of this leaf because it's got a just a hint of red on it at the edges there. So we'll take that out. And we've got, got plenty of time for the plant to grow on. Keep it fed. Lots of balanced feed. I'm still giving balanced feed. I'm not even thinking at all about high potash at this stage. Um, this needs to grow on more. Uh, it's fairly damp, it will need a water today because of course we're getting these warmer days now. So I will be watering a bit more regularly. Probably be up to three times this week. I'm just gonna take that leaf out there, a bit pale. Just get a bit of light down into these, um, into the base of the plant. But there we are. I mean, it's okay. It's not really a lot to report. It's uh, is doing okay. It's nicely balanced, uh, but it does need some more density. Got a yellow leaf there, which I will take out. I think we had a similar issue last year, uh, although I don't remember the. Um, the spring being as quite as dull as it was uh, last, as, as it was, as it has been this spring. But um, yeah, there we go. That that's one of the problems we've got. But you know, that's throwing a good shape. So hopefully it won't be too bad come the uh, show time. Now we have got a little bit of colour coming now, and I'll, I'll just run you through some of the plants, some of the regals, some of the unstopped regals from mostly on uh, young standards. Uh, are beginning to uh, come out now. Right, so if we have a look down, um, I've got a few of my regals, got a Bolero here. I absolutely love Bolero. It's a sort of unique growing uh, plant. This is a stand, I've got a couple of good standards of them, but I love Bolero. That's the sort of thing that I'm aiming for on my own uh, unique hybrid that we bred from Orsit last year which you can see down here, uh, it's growing like crazy, but I'm still not really seeing any bloom from it, uh, which is <laughs> somewhat frustrating. There is a bit of bloom coming, so we, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, this is First Blush. I absolutely love First Blush. It's a regal that's just coming out. Interestingly, none of my regal seedlings are flowering yet, which is quite uh, quite bizarre. Uh, we've got Mohawk down there, popular uh, regal, really uh, striking sort of terracotta markings on the white base there. Really particularly like that one, always have liked that one. Uh, this is Elsie Taylor, just beginning to come into bloom, another one of my standards of that plant. Um, that one was named after my mother. Now we've got Silver Splash, that is becoming, that is coming out as a bicolour. I'm hopeful that this will go to show, but I do need to strip off the blooms. Now with singles, they, the blooms fall much quicker on the single for flowering varieties. Uh, so I can strip those off and we've got thousands of bloom heads coming there uh, to follow on behind. So I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, it, I mean, it's not brilliant, but it is okay. It's... Uh, it is not doing too bad. Uh, lavender Sensation. This is uh, a lovely bloom. Uh, huge, absolutely massive. Uh, that's probably about five or six centimetres across that bloom. Uh, but yeah, massive blooms. Uh, again, a young standard uh, just beginning to come through. Uh, Peppermint Star Stella, Gold Leaf Stella. Singles, you see, aren't affected by this deformed bloom problem that we get 
which is always quite interesting. Um, got a white one down here. This is white chiffon. Always a little bit of debate about white chiffon because it's a Schmidt variety uh, from America. Quite an old variety and lots of debate about whether the white chiffon has actually got any little pink blotches on such as this one. Um, but that was bought from a, a, a UK nursery, so we really don't know. And Lilac Elaine up there, popular show variety. Um, always, you know, does quite well in the in the show arena. Produces a relatively compact plant. That's a young one uh, from a cutting that I took off of a, an old stock plant last year, which I've since got rid of. And this one over the back here, bushfire, that's quite a large standard I've got of that, just sort of starting to come into bloom. Uh, now, one or two of the regals can get deformed blooms. Uh, they tend to be sort of really tubular type blooms. Uh, I haven't actually seen that this year, strangely. Um, so the regals don't seem to have been, been affected by any deformities this year. But that could purely be down to the fact uh, that they actually don't mind the cool, uh, cool situation in the spring. Uh, Martin Pope, a uh, really glorious uh, dark coloured uh, variety. Uh, I have put shorts up of one or two of these blooms, and I can't remember offhand what ones I've done and what ones I haven't done, so um, forgive me if I have done shorts of them. Right, well, that's just about it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed that little update on uh, what we're doing in the greenhouse now. As I say, have a look at my own YouTube channel where I do fill in uh, some of the bits and pieces that I get up to in the greenhouse. Uh, I'll be back soon. There's plenty going on, so I'm sure I'll be back with another instructional video soon. So that's it from me. Bye-bye for now.